Today in cloud gaming news, we're going to be talking about Amazon Luna, Xbox Cloud Gaming, but we're going to start with some more information about PlayStation Plus Premium, and this time, it's kind of bad news. It seems like every time Sony manages to do something right by the customer, such as adding trophies as well as other features like CRT filters and rewind features to the PS1 and PSV classics, they always manage to follow it up with a pretty big blunder of their own, and this time it's kind of a big deal, especially if you happen to have stacked PS Plus. I'm gonna attempt to break this down in the simplest terms. If you would have bought PlayStation Plus during the Play Days event where PlayStation Plus was on sale for 33% off, and you decided to stack up a few years of it, which is something Sony had absolutely no problem with you doing, by the way, and you've now decided to upgrade to the new PlayStation Plus Extra or PlayStation Plus Premium tier, you're gonna have to not only pay the difference that is owed between those two tiers, but also the entirety of the discount that you were sold. Yes, you heard that right. You're gonna have to pay back that 33% off that you got as part of the Play Days event or any other deal, and you'll be paying back that 33% off for every single year you purchased at a discounted rate. In reality, this probably won't be an issue for many people out there, but for a select few who decided to try and save some money, well, this is gonna blow. There are already some users in Asia where the new PS Plus tiers have just recently launched that are complaining big time about this, and I can't blame them. Based on a translation, this user apparently bought 15 years of PlayStation Plus at a 33% discounted rate by Sony. In order to upgrade to either of the new tiers, not only do they have to commit to those 15 years of subscription, but they also have to pay the discount back for each and every single one of those years. This user in particular has to pay the equivalent of 754 US dollars to move up to the premium tier, and if they don't want to pay that all at once, well, too bad you can't upgrade. I will point out that anyone who stacked PlayStation Plus through gray markets such as CD keys or other sites like that, are probably in the clear as those don't get marked as discounted rates. But if you stacked it during a discount on the official PlayStation Store, or even went to buy PlayStation Plus cards during the Play Days event at a retail store, they do mark those cards specifically at the discounted rate. If you want to check this out for yourself, you simply have to log into your PlayStation account, go to your subscription details, and see what PlayStation Plus is listed as. If there was some sort of discount whenever you purchased it, you'll see it tagged as Days of Play Sale Subscription. To keep it real with you all, as a fan of PlayStation, I seriously hope Sony walks this back, and if they do by the time this video gets pushed live, you'll note it in the description below as well as the pinned comment of this video. But right now, some of the biggest and most committed fans are the ones really feeling the burn. Especially when you compare it to how Xbox handled the situation with Game Pass Ultimate. You simply had to pay a dollar and all your stack subscription years were converted into Ultimate. I wasn't expecting that big of a deal when it came to Sony, but I also wasn't expecting this series of a burn for some of the people who are most loyal to the platform. I'll be sure to keep you updated on any more information that drops on the new PS Plus tiers, but for now, let's move over to the Team Xbox side of things and see what's going on there. When it comes to Xbox Cloud Gaming, despite it being very new, they're actually sharing incredibly impressive numbers. Microsoft's very own CEO, Satya Nadella, has shared that they have over 10 million Xbox players across 26 countries playing on the cloud. Obviously, Xbox as a brand has already established a pretty big install base, but it shouldn't take away from the impressive numbers that they're achieving here. After all, more people being introduced to the concept of cloud gaming is debunking more of those myths that cloud gaming just isn't playable. More and more, I'm starting to see your average gamer actually embrace the possibilities that the cloud allows and some of the benefits that come with it. This is a huge deal and the fact is is that it's only going to get better from here, not just for Xbox but for everyone involved in the space. The fact that it's Microsoft's CEO themselves sharing this number really goes to show what a big success it's been for them so far and it also speaks volumes about their commitment to the space and how much continued investment they're going to have within it. But moving on from that, let's talk about two Ubisoft titles that are going to be added to Game Pass real soon. Earlier this month, it was confirmed that both Assassin's Creed Origins and For Honor Marching Fire Edition were going to be added to the Game Pass subscription, but now we have official dates to give. You can look forward to playing Assassin's Creed Origins on June 6th and For Honor Marching Fire Edition on May 31st. Both titles will be available to stream and play through the cloud as well as Xbox and PC locally. But now it's time we move over to Amazon Luna and see what's new over there. If you're an Amazon Luna subscriber, you may have recently gotten an email stating that you are a founding player. 
The text contained within that email is the following. Hello, founding player. Thank you for being part of Luna since day one. We believe cloud gaming is the future, and we're excited to have you on board as we build a new world of gaming together. We hope you'll share the love of play with your friends. We have a few new projects in the works, so stay tuned. Sincerely, Amazon Luna. The message reads as a simple thank you for being subscribed to Amazon Luna while they're still testing it out, but it definitely alludes to more being in the works and we'll hear more about it soon. Now I may be reading into it too much, but I do think it's very interesting that they chose to say that they're excited to have founders on board as they build a new world of gaming together. Could this be alluding to Amazon Luna getting ready to launch outside of the United States and to the rest of the world? Who knows? But it's definitely alluding to something. After all, they did end the email by stating that they have a few new projects in the works and to stay tuned. As somebody who's been covering cloud gaming for the longest time now, I've been waiting forever for Amazon Luna to finally make its way over to Canada, and I seriously hope that this is the start of that because I would absolutely love to start covering it more in depth on the channel. I find their position in the cloud gaming space extremely interesting, and I definitely want to play some games that are only available on their service, such as Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. With June right around the corner and Summer Games Fest about to begin, we may not have to wait too long to find out what Amazon has in store for everyone. Whatever it may be, rest assured that I'll be covering it on the channel as soon as it happens, so be sure to stay tuned. And with that, we've wrapped up all the cloud gaming news of the day. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out. And if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. As always, thanks for watching. This has been The Virtual Cloud, giving you the latest and greatest on everything cloud gaming related. And until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.